King Fernando of Burbania had three sons, Pedro, Diego, and Juan, of whom the last was the favorite. He so loved Juan that when one night he dreamed that his two children conspired against their youngest brother, the king became so frightened that he fell sick with a malady, which none of the physicians of the kingdom were able to cure. Persons were not lacking, however, who would advise him that Bertadarna was the one living being in the world, which could restore to him his lost health and tranquility. Acting on this advice, he sent out his oldest son Pedro to look for this coveted animal. After days of wandering through the dense forests and extensive thickets, he came to a tree of the diamond, at the foot of which he fell down tired and thirsty. He never suspected that it was this very tree in which the famous bird was accustomed to pass the night, and when the night was setting and the Adarna flung into the air the first of its seven songs, his melody was so softly sweet that Pedro was lulled into a profound sleep. After emitting its seventh melody for the night, the bird defecated on the sleeping prince who was thereby converted into a stone. When Pedro had not returned after the lapse of one year, the now weakening king asked his second son Diego also to launch out in search of the same bird. Diego underwent the same vicissitudes and hardships and came to exactly the same fate as Pedro converted into a stone at the foot of the enchanted tree. At last Juan, the youngest and most favored son was sent forth after his elder brothers in search of the treacherous bird. Juan, however, had the fortune to meet on his way an old hermit who was impressed by the virtues and good manners of the young prince, and knowing the mission on which he embarked, put him on guard against the treacheries, intrigues, and cunning of the famous bird. First, he provided him with a knife and a lemon, warning him that if he wanted to free himself from the irresistible drowsiness induced by the seven melodies of the Adarna, he had to open on his body seven wounds and distill into them the juice of the lemon. The pain caused by this might prevent him from sleeping. Next, the hermit warned him to avoid any defecation that might fall from the bird after it sang its seven songs so that he would not suffer the fate of his brothers. Lastly, he told him that after finishing his seventh song, the famous bird would fall asleep and that the prince should take advantage of this occasion to take him prisoner. The hermit gave him a golden cord to tie the bird when caught and two pails of water to pour over his two petrified brothers, which would bring them back to life. Juan did as was bidden and soon found himself in possession of the desired bird and on his way back to his home country with his two brothers, Pedro and Diego. On the way, however, being envious that Juan had obtained what they were not able to do, the two older brothers conspired between themselves to do away with him. Pedro suggested that they should kill him, but Diego, who was less brutal, convinced Pedro that it was sufficient to beat him, which they did. After beating Juan to whom they owed their lives, they left him unconscious in the middle of the road as the two brothers continued on their way to the palace. Once there, they presented themselves to their fathers as the ones who actually caught the Adarna. To their surprise, the bird refused to sing for the king in the absence of Prince Juan, and the monarch did not get well. It was also fortunate that the old hermit who guided Juan to the Adarna found him stretched out helpless on the road, after curing him of his wounds the prince could be returned safely to his father's kingdom. It was then that the bird, out of sheer contentment, burst into a harmonious song recounting the history of its capture. The song cured the king but angered him greatly to learn of his two sons' treachery towards Don Juan. The monarch, blinded by his ire, decreed the death of his two elder sons, but Juan with a noble heart interceded for them as always and once again reigned in the kingdom peace and merriment. But on a certain night when Juan fell asleep while guarding the Adarna bird in its golden cage, his two elder brothers again entered into a conspiracy with one another to put him in the bad graces of their father by releasing the bird from its cage. Juan, ashamed of what he thought was his fault, slipped out of the palace and started to go in search of the famous bird. King Fernando hurriedly ordered Pedro and Diego to start the pursuit of the bird and Juan. After an extensive search, the bird was not found, but the three brothers finally encountered each other near an incredibly deep well. They decided to explore it instead of returning to the palace for the fear of the ire of their father. Pedro, the eldest, was the first to descend by means of a cord lowered by the two brothers who remained above, but he had scarcely gone a third of the way when he felt afraid and gave the sign for his two brothers to pull him out of the well. Presently, Diego was let down, but he too could not go farther down than half of the way. When it was Juan's turn to go he allowed himself to be let down to the lowest depths of the cistern. There the prince discovered two enchanted palaces, the first being occupied by Princess Juana, who informed him she was being held prisoner by a giant, and the second by Princess Leonora, also the prisoner of a large seven-headed serpent. After killing the giant and the serpent, the prince tugged on the cord and soon came up to the surface of the earth with the two captive princesses, whom his two brothers soon wanted to take away from him. 
Diego desired Princess Juana for himself, and Pedro wanted Princess Leonora. Before the parting, however, Leonora discovered that she left her ring in the innermost recesses of the well. Juan voluntarily offered to take it for her, but when he was halfway down, the two brothers cut the rope he was descending, causing him to fall to the bottom of the well. Not long after this, wedding bells were rung in the palace. Diego married Princess Juana, but Princess Leonora before casting her lot with Prince Pedro, requested her marriage to him delayed for a term of seven years, because she might still have a chance to unite herself with Don Juan. Don Juan, thanks to Leonora's enchanted ring found in the well, could avail himself of the help of a wolf which cured him of his wounds, fix his dislocations, and bring him to the medicinal waters of the Jordan, and took him out of the well. Already torn of all hope of ever finding the Adarna, Don Juan resolved to return to the kingdom. But to his confusion, he was unable to find his way. No one could tell him precisely which was the way that would lead him to the kingdom of his father. He came across the Adarna who told him that he should forget about Leonora, because Maria Blanca is better than her, and Don Juan forgot about Leonora. The Adarna told Don Juan that Maria Blanca could be found in Reino de los Cristales. He came across three hermits, none of whom could give him the necessary information. The last of these consulted all the of the animals from the surrounding areas, but none of them could tell the prince the direction towards Reino de los Cristales. But the king of all these animals, a swiftly soaring eagle, having compassion for his troubles, offered to take the prince to wherever he desired. After an epic flight, the prince and the eagle came to a distant crystal lake, on whose shores they landed to rest from their long and tiresome flight. Then the eagle related to his companion the secrets of the crystal lake. This was the bathing place where, in certain hours of the day, the three daughters of the most powerful and most feared king of the surrounding regions used to dive into the water and swim, and for this reason, it was not proper for the prince to commit any indiscretion if he desired to remain and see the spectacle of the bath. Don Juan remained, and when the hour of the bathing arrived, he saw plunging into the pure crystal water the figures of the three most beautiful princesses whom his sinful eyes had ever seen. He then secretly hid and kept one of the princess's dresses. When the princess noticed the theft, her two sisters had already gone. The prince hurriedly ran to her and on his knee, begged her pardon and placed at her feet her stolen dress, and at the same time poured forth the most ardent and tender professions of love. Pleased by his gentleness and gallant phrases, the princess also fell in love with him, but she advised him that it would be better for him to go away before her father would come to know of his intrusion. If he did not do so she would be converted into another piece of stone for the walls of the enchanted palace in which they live, in the same way that all the other suitors who aspired for their hands had been transformed. On being informed of the adventure of the bold prince, the king sent for him. Don Juan, who would risk everything for the privilege of seeing his beloved, presented himself to the king in spite of the princess's warning. The king, greatly impressed with the youth's tact and self-possession, chose to give him a series of tests both gigantic and impossible for ordinary mortals. After completing these trials the king was satisfied and offered Don Juan his daughter. However, the princess, fearing that her father might resort to a new trick to foil their happiness, ordered the prince to direct himself to the royal stables in order to take the best horse and have him ready for them to flee on that same night. Unfortunately, the prince in his hurry took the wrong horse, and the king came immediately went in pursuit of the fugitives. The king, riding the best horse, pursued them tenaciously, but through the use of cunning magic, the princess helped them to outrace the king. When at last they found themselves safe and free, it did not take them long before they could reach the portals of the Burbanian kingdom. But the prince, alleging that he should have such preparations duly made for entry into the royal palace as are appropriate for her category and dignity, left Doña Maria on the way promising to return for her once he had informed the committee that was to receive her. Once in the midst of the happiness of palace life, Don Juan soon forgot his profession of love for Doña Maria. He became dazzled by the beauty of Princess Leonora, who had been waiting for him during all the days of his absence, and he sought her hand in marriage while Doña Maria was impatiently waiting for his return. When she came to know of the infidelity of Don Juan, the pilgrim princess made use of the talisman which she always carried with her and adorned with the most beautiful royal garments, and carried in a large coach drawn by eight sorrel-colored horses with four palfreys, she presented herself at the door of the palace, practically inviting herself to the royal wedding of Prince Don Juan and Princess Doña Leonora. Out of respect for so beautiful a guest from foreign lands and on the occasion of the wedding itself, there were celebrated tournaments, in one Doña Maria succeeded in inserting as one of the number dance of a Negrito and a Negrita created from nothing through her marvelous talisman. In the dance, the Negrita carried a whip in her hand, and with it, she pitilessly lashed her Negrito partner, calling him Don Juan, 
while she proceeded to remind of all the vicissitudes of fortune undergone by him at the site on Doña Maria, the part which was played by the whipping Negrita. The scene of the bath, the different tests to which he had been subjected by her father, the flight of both that was full of accidents, and his cruel abandonment of her on the way. Every crack of the whip which fell on the shoulders of the Negrito seemed at the time to the true Don Juan as it is was lashing his own body and flesh. At the end of the scene, the prince repentant of his grave offense, came down from his throne to implore pardon from the princess Doña Maria, and to offer her his hand, promising to take her for his wife, in the presence of all the people of his kingdom. When the king, his father Don Fernando, came to know of the rivalry of the two princesses, Doña Maria and Doña Leonora, both aspiring to the hand of Don Juan, he consulted with the archbishop of the kingdom on the case, the church dignitary deciding in favor of Doña Leonora, invoking for her the priority of the right. But Doña Maria was determined to fight to the last for the prince of her love, and, taking advantage of the power of her talisman, sent all over the Barbania kingdom a big inundation which threatened to carry away the whole nation, together with all its inhabitants. King Fernando and his subjects trembled in the face of the imminent danger, and all supplicated Princess Doña Leonora to be content with marrying Don Pedro, the brother of Don Juan, which she did for the good of all, occasioning for this reason a double marriage, an occasion which brought about once more tranquility and joy to the Burbanian kingdom.